So in this episode, I'm going to explain how we uh, calculate uh, uh, seller's revenue, expected revenue in the second price or the Vickery auction. Uh, first, I'm going to give you a, a general uh, way of solving and then for a specific example, for a specific numerical example, I'll show you how to calculate those revenues. Well, intuitively though, the idea is very simple. Expected revenue is, remember, the seller is the guy who is selling a single object to potentially n many bidders. And so only one of those bidders are going to uh, buy this uh, good because there's only one good. And so uh, all he's going to do is just pay a price, his bid. Uh, well, I mean, I'm sorry, in the second price auction, he's going to pay the second highest bid. Well, that means uh, the, the, the winner's uh, payment is the seller's revenue. Okay, so all we have to do is to calculate the uh, sell, uh, bidder's uh, bid. But obviously, this is going to be an expected term. Well, why is that so? Well, because uh, the seller doesn't know which player or which bidder has what valuation or signal. So the signals are distributed according to some probability distribution function over some interval. Remember, uh, I assume that we have n bidders and the valuations or signals are distributed according to this uh, CDF function in this interval S lower bar S upper bar and so the seller the only thing he knows is that all those end bidders are going to uh, sort of pick some uh, signal from this interval all right and then uh, with some problem well certainly one of them is going to have the highest valuation uh, and so he's going to win and, and, and he's going to pay the second highest valuation. But the thing is, what is the second highest uh, value or signal? I, well, all the seller knows it's in, in this range. That's all he knows. So therefore, he has to calculate in expected terms what the second uh, highest valuation is. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we define a parameter y and it is a random variable which basically uh, tells us the second highest signal all right so remember f is producing n many signals one for each uh, bidder and out of those signals y is the second highest valuation okay or second highest uh, signal as you realized i use this evaluation and signal interchangeably well now consider any bidder with some signal s all right so s is in this range obviously well i'm going to uh, define another uh, cumulative distribution function i i call it g all right so g of s is defined by this probability that this y term is less than or equal to s what does that mean that means g is the probability that the bidder with signal s wins the auction right because he has the highest value uh, the s guy has the highest value because the second highest valuation is less than or equal to s don't forget equality doesn't mean anything because it's a zero probability event assuming that f is continuous and so that is the case where this guy with value value or signal s wins the object well why s why well remember in the first mm, i'm sorry in the second price auction everybody uh, bids according to his valuation so when i say a bidder with signal s uh, well this is actually the bidder who bids s uh, well obviously the other bidders valuations are less than s so that means their bids are also less than s and hence uh, the s guy is going to be the winner Okay, well, so GS basically the likelihood that uh, you can win if your signal is S. Well, what is this likelihood? Well, I, I think that's simple. The probability that everybody else has a signal less than S 
is f to the power n minus 1. Um, well, yeah, okay, capital N, small n. In my previous lecture notes, I used small n. Here I turn into a, as, as a capital N. I hope that doesn't confuse you. So f to the power n minus 1 s. Well, why is that so? Well, because every bidder has is choosing his signal independently from everybody else. All right, so one guy is going to choose a signal less than s is f of s. Another guy also chooses a signal less than s is also, the probability is also f of s. Well, both of those guys are choosing signals less than s is f of s times f of s, so f square of s. But we have n minus one uh, players, bidders, other than uh, the player with signal s. So therefore, the probability that uh, all the other guy's signals will be less than s is simply f of f to the power n minus 1 s. We couldn't simply calculate it this way if we didn't have f uh, same across all the players. Uh, but it wouldn't change much because the idea is very simple. Remember, if one guy has f1, another guy has f2, sort of different distributions. So each bidder is, is, is picking his valuations or signals from different distributions. Well, then that would be then f1 times f2 times f3, etc. But the thing is, then I have to keep track of uh, the name of this uh, 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 bidder. Well, he, he has a signal S, yes, but what's the name of this bidder? Because then I need to use that uh, uh, sort of uh, name uh, for the rest of the uh, uh, F functions. So we don't have to do this because we have a much simpler environment. Everybody is selecting his signal or valuation from exactly the same probability distribution F. All right, so uh, this is just an assumption. Well, I mean, implication, because f is a continuous uh, CDF, g is also a continuous GDF, and so it has uh, a, a some probability distribution function, let's call it g, okay, small g. All right, so now what is the expected payment of a bidder with value s? So if I'm a bidder and I, I, I picked a signal s, how much money uh, should I be expecting to pay? Well, remember, I don't know the second highest bid. Uh, so before I make my bid, I know I'm going to bid my valuation, my signal S, but what is, I mean, how much money I'm expected to pay? Well, that depends on the value of the second highest bid, right? So remember, it's the Y uh, 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 parameter. So the value of the second highest bid is small y. Capital Y is a random variable like, if we remember the model I described, capital S is, is indicating a random variable. Small s is a realization of that random variable. So y is a random variable and small y is a realization. So this is the second highest bid, okay? But this bid is going to be definitely less than s, right? So uh, not zero, I'm sorry. It comes from... Uh, the interval s lower bar all the way up to s. It will never be equal to s because that's a zero probability event, remember? Uh, because everything is continuous. So integral s lower bar all the way up to s, y g y, g is the uh, distribution, a probability distribution, uh, uh, density function of, of the y uh, random variable, d of y, all right? So this is the expected payment of the bidder with value uh, or with signal S. All right, what is next? Hmm, well, uh, well, that's a terminology uh, I, maybe you never heard of. Ex ante expected payment of the bidder with signal S. What the heck is ex, ex, ex ante expected payment? Well, remember this is the expected payment. So once, um, let's say I'm a bidder with the signal S. So I know that in expected terms, this is how much money I am going to pay, all right? I may not pay this because I may lose it, but I, if I may pay more than this, but in expectation, this is what I'm going to pay once I learn my signal. Well, ex ante expected payment is, well, before I receive my signal, all right? So I'm just one guy, one of those N guys. I am about to 
participate into this uh, second price auction, I haven't yet uh, picked my signal. All right, so before I pick my signal, how much money am I expecting to, uh, uh, expected to pay? So this is what's called ex ante, before it's realized, the signal has been realized, expected payment of the bidder with the signal. Uh, uh, well, I'm sorry, so there is no, uh, of a bidder, all right? There is no signal S, all right? Because that, that's oxymoron. Ex ante expected payment of a bidder, all right? So before you see your signal, how much are you going to pay? Well, remember, if you receive signal S, this is how much you're gonna pay. But this S is a random variable which basically distributes from S lower bar to S upper bar according to probability distribution function F and the density function F. So therefore, my ex ante expected payoff is this integral M of S, right? My expected payment once the signal realization is S, but this S is distributed with this probability density function f of S, dS. Well, this S is coming from S lower bar all the way up to S upper bar. I don't know which one of those signals I'm going to receive. So this is how much money I should expect to pay before even entering and, and pulling my, my signal. Well, then we, I mean, remember, we don't really care about how much... Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the sellers, I'm sorry, the, the bidders are uh, expected to pay. We are, I mean, this is not particularly what we care. What we want to find is how much the seller is going to extract from the bidders. So this is how much money the seller is going to get from one ordinary bidder in expected terms. Well, remember, there are n many bidders. So therefore, expected revenue of the seller is equal to n, the number of bidders, times m, the ex ante expected payoff. So that's it. This is how we calculate the uh, revenue in the Vickery auction. And now I'm going to give you a one numerical example. Okay, so here is the numerical example. It's very straightforward. Uh, I am just going to do the algebra because I already explained what all those terms mean. So I'm not going to spend any time on explaining them. So here's the example. I have n bidders. n is some number greater than 2. I don't know the specific value. However, the signals are distributed in 0, 1 closed interval according to this probability uh, uh, distribution function, f of s equals s square. So the density function is just the derivative of it. So it's 2s. This is the density function. Well, then g of s uh, is, remember, f to the power n minus 1s. And so uh, this is the f, the probability distribution function. So we just need to take the power uh, to the power uh, n minus 1. So that means 2n minus 2, s to the power 2n minus 2. Okay? And therefore, the small gs, the probability density function, is the derivative of this guy, which is 2n minus 2, s to the power 2n minus 3. All right, that's it. So this is the expected payment of the bidder who has signal S. So M of S is equal to from zero, this is the lower boundary, up to S, Y, G, Y, D, Y. All right, so Y times G, Y, remember, is 2N minus 2, Y to the power. So be careful, I'm just changing the parameter S to Y. So it's Y to the power 2N minus 3 times D, Y. So when you take this integral, it's simple. Uh, first of all, this y and y to the power 2n minus 3 will multiply. So it's going to be y to the power 2n minus 2. Uh, this is a constant coefficient. I can actually pull this out of the integral. All right. And this is exactly what I do to, to the, uh, two, 2 n minus 2. So then it is the integral of y to the power 2n minus 2. Uh, dy. So, well, its integral is simple because you have to find a term whose derivative is equal to this guy. Well, it's y to the power 2n minus 1, right? Because if you take its derivative, 
uh, you're gonna get 2n minus 2 but you have to multiply or uh, I'm sorry divide this term with 2n minus 1 so this is going to be the integral don't forget the boundaries 0 all the way up to s uh, well, when you plug s, this is what you're going to get. When you plug 0, this entire term will be 0. So this is this minus 0, so ignore 0. So therefore, the expected payment of the bidder whose uh, signal is s is going to be equal to this term. Some constant, which is a function of n, times your signal to the power 2n minus 1. Okay? Don't forget, this is the uh, second price auction. Uh, this is an expected payment, all right? So you are going to bid your valuation or signal S, but that doesn't mean that you're going to pay S. You are going to pay uh, the second highest bid, but you don't know what it is, so we take the expectation, okay? Well, then what is the X ante expected payoff? Well, S is uh, distributed in 0, 1 interval according to this density function. So it's M of S, F of F, S, D, S. All right, so they basically this constant 2n minus 2 divided by 2n minus 1, S to the power 2n minus 1, uh, times F of S, remember it's 2S, D, S. Okay, so this S term and S to the power 2n minus 1 term will be multiplied. So it's going to be S to the power 2n. And I have here this coefficient 2n minus 2 divided by 2n minus 1 times 2. So I can pull this out of the integral. And then integral of S to the power 2n ds. Well, that's simple. Uh, it is S to the power 2n plus 1. But I have to divide this thing by 2n plus 1 as well. Okay, and again, 0, 1, the boundaries, don't forget, but when s is equal to 0, this entire term will be 0. So it, all it matters is its value with 1. So when I plug 1 instead of s, uh, this integral is therefore is going to be equal to this term. Okay, well, so this is the expected ex ante expected payment uh, of one bidder. But remember, we have n many bidders, right? So therefore, the expected revenue in the second price auction, expected revenue in the second price auction is going to be n times m. So it is equal to uh, 2n minus 2 divided by 2n minus 1 times 2n divided by 2n plus 1. That's it. Whatever n is, this is what the expected revenue uh, will look like. So, for example, if n is equal to 2, I mean, if there are only two bidders, things are simpler there, right? This is 4 minus 2. So, it's uh, 2 divided by 3 times uh, 4 divided by uh, 5. So, it's basically 8 divided by 15, all right? Well, don't forget, uh, the valuations are coming from 0, 1. So the highest bid is 1 and the lowest bid is 0. But in expected terms, if there are only two bidders, uh, the seller should expect 8 divided by 15 uh, revenue. Okay, so this is how we calculate the expected revenue in the second price auction or in the Vickery auction.